Interested in a story about the origin of Kali Linux? Of course you are. Secure Ninja. Hi guys, I'm Alicia Webb. Secure Ninja TV was recently in Tel Aviv, Israel to attend Cybertech 2017. Our producer and director John Miller caught up with Roni Bakar of Avnet and they discussed part of the origin story of Kali Linux, which actually had a modest beginning before developing into your favorite pen testing tool. Give me some background on uh, how you, what, what role you played in the original development of Kali Linux. Okay, so I can tell you my history is that uh, one of my employees was uh, Matti Aoni. Matti Aoni is the guy behind Offensive Security and he's behind Kali Linux. The idea of Kali Linux came a long time before in one of our clients. We needed to get into a very uh, a government client without uh, entering a computer uh, or any kind of USB or stuff like that. So what we did, we took a very small city, ROM, and we put all, all our tools in a Linux environment. And using that uh, tools, we, got, we hacked uh, this uh, organization. And then we said, whoa, it can be a good uh, tool set to every hacker all over the world. So we, tried, we started to, to build it together, to brand it a little bit. It was called in the first stage, uh, Wax. And then Mati took it uh, over and made it as a uh, Wopix and, uh, and uh, Backtrack and then Kali Linux. So it was just a tool that you guys kind of put together just for convenience sake? Yeah. And now it's grown to this major yeah, pen yeah, yeah. testing. Uh, yeah, of course. It's been a, sta it's a standard pen testing tool. Yeah, yeah. Today it's a standard, uh, standard uh, pen test tool. I think everybody is using it because uh, it's very easy to use it. Okay? You have all your, it's like a knife that you have in your pocket with all your tools, with all the need you, all your, uh, your kind of tools that you need in order to hack a place. And uh, I think because of that, it's very common. Did you think at those early days that it would become what it has become? Uh, I think yes, because in the end I understood the impact that it can have and bring to the person that is using that. Because when I got in with using this CD-ROM, I understood the power that I can use one CD-ROM and, and get control of all the networks. So I understood, yeah, I understood the impact that it can give. I didn't understand the, the, the size of the community that it can bring. I'm just curious, how many tools did you start off with? We started with, uh, of course, Metasploit. Metasploit was, uh, uh, was uh, the first tool that we put in. Uh, we put some uh, tools like an Nmap and Nessuscan and stuff like that. And uh, we started with a very, I think, class 15, 20 tools. And then we go from there using driver for Wi-Fi attacks and, and uh, stuff like that. That's fantastic. So what are you doing now? So today I'm still in the same company at Avnet. Uh, I'm the, I established the penetration team and the cyber attack team, uh, the research team and the incident response team. Avnet in the end is doing uh, all the cyber security for all the major clients in Israel. We are giving consulting from one point of view and from the other point of view we are giving them training. One of the things that we saw that there is a very lack of knowledge between uh, the knowledge of the people when they have an incident, what they should do and what they shouldn't do when they have an incident. I can tell you that I've been in a lot of incidents, the uh, response in Israel in all of our, our clients, and we saw that there is a, a lack of knowledge how to, to handle uh, st uh, stuff like uh, malware attacks and government attack over a uh, different uh, network. So what we, we did, we built like, like our own uh, training facility that is using uh, different virtual uh, machines, okay? That you are entering into a virtual network and I'm running a real attacks using our system on your virtual network. And you need to defend against this attack with using different tools like firewalls, checkpoints, like using McAfee uh, endpoint security and using other tools like uh, Alien Vault and stuff like that in order to first understand what was the route of the attack how we did it, and how to mitigate the attack in order to defend your uh, organization. All right, you have a demo for me. Yeah, so this is the facility the, of the program that we, are, we made. This is the trainer point of view on the organization. You can see here that we have like different networks. Each network has its own uh, people that are sitting and using that network. Uh, for our point of view, we need to establish two things. The first thing, always the network should be up and running okay it's, it's going to be and you can see the, the green screen on top of uh, that is saying how much time 
the network was up. Because sometimes we are giving the network malfunctions, regular system malfunction that are giving uh, the, the people to under, they need to understand if it's a malfunction or if it's a cyber attack. On top of that, we are running cyber attacks. So sometimes the groups need to, to deal with the cyber attack and sometimes they need to deal with false positive as a real world scenario. And in a, in a real world scenario, they will have malfunction. What is good with the system that I can control every step that I'm running over the attack, okay? So as I explained before, I can choose all the attack in one place, okay? I can run on one group all the attack in the same place. So if people, if people will be, are very good in what they are doing, I'll run it simultaneously in one time, okay? If I can see that I have a very slow group that they don't understand exactly how to work with the incident and what to do and how to, uh, to understand what is happening, so I can choose one attack and run only one attack on that network, okay? Uh, when we are draining people, we are draining between four people to 16 people. Uh, each group has its own network, as I explained before. Each group is contained for four people. This can be a network guy, this can be a system guy, and this can be a security guy that join together in order to understand exactly what the incident and how to react to this incident. You can see here that what we did, we, did, we tried to do to take an average a network that uh, every organization will see himself inside its network. This network has an internet, has it a DMZ with a web server, FTP server, and Active Directory externally. It has an internal server domain that has terminal server, file server, web server, SQL server, and exchange server, and Active Directory, of course. And it has the workstation uh, uh, VLAN that has all the users. And another network that uh, all, all the security appliances that the organization is using. So in the end, we are, we, the users are able to connect to each system that you have seen here. They can connect straight to the SQL server, they can connect straight to the, to the checkpoint firewall, they can use their McAfee in order to see the endpoints, and they can use the Alien Vault in order to see exactly what is going on with, with their network. And using that tools, they need to understand exactly what was gone and what happened in their network. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to Secure Ninja TV if you haven't already so you don't miss any of the great content that we filmed at Cybertech in Israel. We're actually filming some great content here, too, at RSA 2017 in San Francisco. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought of this video and how much Kali Linux has played a role in your life. I'm Alicia Webb, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.